We talked this morning about changing the emphasis for our, the direction of our business to go more from analog based, product based, to be more network and system solution based. And this is what I'm going to be <coughs> reflecting in our lineup of product lineup this afternoon. You'll see a greater emphasis on IP cameras, IP recorders, and software. And as Alistair from ISM mentioned this morning, we are not, by any stretch of imagination, ignoring our analog um, base. It's been very successful for us, and there's a huge amount of analog business still out there for us to win. These are the areas I'm going to talk to you about today. We're going to look at VJ network cameras, one, two, three, and five megapixel camera ranges. We're going to look at um, a budget range, and I'll explain that in a bit more detail. We're then going to look at megapixel analog cameras, PTZ cameras, standalone NVRs and DVRs, mobile NVR, and finishing off with the software at the end. <coughs> I showed this slide before. This to me is very important. Um, just chatting to Roy earlier, and he was telling me about how many hundreds of cameras or hundreds of products you're bringing out. But in reality, we have very few. We have a Winner 5, we have an SV5, we have a WiseNet chipset. That's three DSPs, three cameras. But what we've done, we've given them different clothing, giving you the opportunity to install that technology in whatever application you want it installed in. And as I said, we have those in analog, VGA, and the megapixel style. Let's look at the, the VGA network cameras we're bringing out um, in the near future. This one, we just launched um, a couple of weeks ago. It is basically exactly the same as the SMD 3080. However, it's got people counting analytics built in. This is where we can move across from just security into video surveillance, into marketing. Let us start using this data to help us sell in other areas. Footfall management. How many people have come through the door? A new range of megapixel, sorry, a new range of VGA PTZ domes. Some of the changes this year, you'll see the colour. The colour of our PTZ domes has changed. It's gone from the grey silver to the ivory colour. You'll see it outside. It looks fabulous. And to me, it's a great step forward for our company to, to bring out a, a colour change. Very subtle, but it's an important factor. Other things to note with the dome ranges this year, all our network PTZ domes are going to be POE+. Plus. Okay, POE+. Plus. Other big changes, all the domes will now have scheduling. We brought out the 12 times at the end of last year, but all the domes this year will have scheduling. This is so you can set tours going off at 6 o'clock in the evening. I want a particular preset at midnight. I want another preset at 3 o'clock in the morning. Predetermined. Take the emphasis away from the operator. Other things we've done to the domes, we've been, um, now on the internal domes, including the base with the internal product. This is very important, especially for distributors and installers. Instead of you having to work out which base you need, Instead of you having to remember to buy the base, it will come with the internal dome. There is no application for an internal dome that does not need the base. So it just makes things a lot simpler, a lot easier. As with the Win SV4 ranges, we're having a 30 times and 37 times um, zoom ratio. The picture quality, this is fantastic. Um, so we've got one of these new SV5 domes outside, so have a look. 1.3 megapixel. They've been very good to us this year. They've sold really well, and the picture quality and the um, reports got back from benchmark testing. We had 90%, one of the few cameras that ever gets 90%, we've got 90% with our 1.3 megapixel camera. And what we're doing here is extending that range, <coughs> making it wider, including the first and the biggest 20 times megapixel zoom dome. With this, we're including a smart codec. It was mentioned by James this morning. What this does, it helps you with bandwidth management. Do you really need to have a full one, two or three megapixel image transmitted to your recorder? Use all that bandwidth, use all that um, space on your NVR. The easy answer is no. So let's be intelligent with it. Let's 
decide which are our more important areas of the scene to record the high quality. We call the rest of the low quality. It means the transmission is quicker, it means the less recording space is required. And again with this, we have POE Plus. At the end of the year, we are aiming to bring out a 30 times megapixel dome. Each of these we have with the new park code structure, with the H denotes the housing at the end of the, the park code. More products. Two of these are a direct results of customer requests. The bullet camera, the network megapixel bullet camera, that was a direct request from the customers asking us to bring this product out. The flat dome, yes we have that now, but we don't have it with LEDs. This one that's coming out in the next few months is again a direct feedback from our customers saying, I love that flat dome, it's fantastic. If only it had LEDs, we'll buy it. And we're doing that, bringing them out. Fantastic for transport applications, I mentioned this morning. One of the applications for this is bus stops. And that's where we're able to install those flat domes. With this, as before, we have the 2.8 to 10 mil lens. And especially for the colder um, territories around here, down to minus 40 for the band resistant domes. It's very important. Two megapixel cameras. Coming out in Q2 and Q3. You see, what I'm doing with the slides here is giving you the family, the family of products. So it all fits together as, as one. Yes, this has a smart codec as well, but the difference with this over the 1.3, it has facial detection. This facial detection can be linked in with the smart codec. It will then pick up what it determines to be a face and record that and transmit that at a higher image quality to the rest of the scene. So it takes the smart codec to the next level. This is going to be a 20 times zoom module. The beauty is with all these cameras, the, the feature sets are the same across the board. Once you know them, you know the lot. And to give you a real-time example of the way the technology works, and the fact that our SDKs are uniformed. Yesterday when we were setting up the demonstrations, um, I gave Mirasys a the 5010 bundle dome, and he looked at it and thought, I hadn't seen this before. He plugged it in, and it worked straight away. So, the, the unified SDK makes us such a big difference for when we work with our ISP partners. And this is where the feature sets are important. Three megapixel cameras. Again, we have these on display next door. So come and see them, see how good they are. The pitch quality is fantastic. Full range of products we're bringing out. Internal domes, vandal domes, box cameras, bullet cameras. It's the full range, and this is important to me. Again, these have the smart code deck. But one of the great things we bring out with these is a 3.3 to 8.5 millimeter motorized very focal lens, autofocus. Great step forward from the analog side when you have to focus the lens yourself and do the zoom stuff. It's so difficult to set those cameras up. This is why we put the analog connections on the back to make it easy to set the cameras up. Now you can do it in the comfort of your laptop. 100 miles away, wherever it is. Yes. Use the autofocus and the um, electronic zoom on those. Five megapixels. We will, at the end of this year, bring out a range of five megapixel cameras. Again, these will have built in facial detection into the cameras. And the way the image quality is going, and I've seen it out there on the, the ones, the twos, and threes, they are very good quality. An advantage of these, and when you look at um, zoom domes, we talked earlier about the 20 times, where, yes, we have a 37 times zoom, but it's a VGA. If you can zoom to 20 times, megapixel, then when you do the digital zoom, either live or playback, you're getting to your 37 times plus at the VGA quality at that distance. So it really opens up what you can do with these cameras. Cost effective VGA. In the past, there has been three real restrictions to people moving over to IP. There's been the network bandwidth, there's been image quality, and there's been cost. Now, we've really got rid of the first two. The, the image quality is fantastic. 
The bandwidth available is there. What we're trying to do now, let's bring the base cost down because there's a huge mark out there that don't buy IP because of the cost. They can't afford to upgrade, they can't afford to move across to this. It's a big step. So our plan with this range of products is to make it more affordable for those that are not in this market at the moment. And as with before, same SDK, integration will be easy. And again, we said there, it's, it's the range. The box, the bullet, the internal, the band of those. They're all there for you to choose. And that is important. <coughs> Encoders and decoders. Touched on this earlier, here's a bit more detail to talk to you about. As in, each one of these is real time channel. Each one of these has its own IP address. When you buy the rack de device at the top, it comes empty. You then choose do you want one, two, three, or four blades to go in there. Each of the blades is four input channels. Small point, but one of my little favourites, is the little ballon on the, on the bottom right. Simple encoder, nothing special, but what does it do? It turns all those old analog cameras into an IP camera. Stick in the back of the housing, hide it. Nice and simple. Great step forward. This will help, as Alistair mentioned this morning, all those thousands or millions of analog cameras across Europe turn them into being an IP system. Later on this year, we're going to upgrade our encoders, make them more exciting, more, more sexy. And the way we're going to do this is add video analytics to the encoders. This means we're turning a three, four, five year old Samsung camera into the top of the range IP camera. We're giving it an IP um, structure, we're giving it analytics. You can do people counting, you can do tripwire, you can do entry and exit on those analog cameras now because you're going to put it through these encoders that have that feature built in. Great step forward. Decoders. We'll bring out this four channel decoder that will be able to decode uh, image qualities from 19, 20, 10, 18, all the way down to 10, 24, 7, 6, 8. With this, you have an option of either a single image or a quad image. Very important for those with matrices out there to reconvert that image back to be able to display it on their screens. Megapixel analog. There is a market for this. Casino, banks, whether the money counter, get that fantastic image quality in real time. And again, it's a range of products. It's always the range of products in the board. Using digital output. We're using, as um, James said this morning, the existing coaxial cable. With this, because the quality, you are restricted to 90 meters transmission, but we're using existing infrastructure. As with all our other cameras, built in analytics. Analog cameras, again, very important to us. New band resistance zone. Again, you'll see it outside um, on the demonstration suite. This is another example of a request from our customers. We do a fantastic range of band resistance domes. Some of our customers said, well, this is fantastic, it's really good, they're a bit big, can you make them smaller? So this is what we've done. Same technology inside, the only difference being, apart from the colour, is the fact that it goes down to minus 10, not minus 50. But we've answered our customers' requests and brought forward a product that they need in their marketplace. Another product on show next door. We've been very successful this year with our SCB 3001 camera. And that was the first camera on the market with a new Sony 960 chip. It gives cracking, fantastic image quality for an animal camera. And because of its success, we've moved it across to also be on fixed and vandal resistant domes. And next door you'll see uh, the internal dome there. Coupled with its WDR functionality, what better to have a, um, a reception camera, a camera inside um, supermarkets looking at the entrances, get fantastic image quality and not have an issue with the, um, the different light contrast between inside and outside the building. This bullet camera, one of our most successful cameras has been the SCO 28TR. Fantastic across most of Europe. Doesn't fare so well when it gets very cold, like in Russia and Scandinavia. 
So what we've done, again, answering our customers' requests, listening to the voice of our customers. These two cameras have the same technology as the other ones, but with a slightly bigger housing. We added extra heaters and fans to enable them to work down to minus 50 degrees, opening up a whole new market for these cameras. Analog PTZ. Again, as I mentioned earlier, the interns will come with the base. They are the new colour, which looks fantastic. A couple of the extra things I just want to mention here. For the French market, we needed to add um, a minimum of 16 privacy zones. So we've added 16 polygonal privacy zones. For those who are not sure, a polygonal privacy zone is one they can decide the shape. As long as it's got four corners, it can look at a perspective down the street. Instead of having three or four blocks, you can use one privacy zone to do a perspective down the street to cover a private area. We've also increased the number of alarm inputs into these domes. We've gone from um, four to seven. The other thing I found today, which has been a fantastic little addition for those installers, is the power connector on the back is removable. Great little addition to our product. Small, but to me it's very important. And again, these will go down to minus 50 degrees. The SV5 version. As before, the same as the SD5 cameras, it's got the analytics built in and it's got the auto tracking. And we have this one um, just outside, so you see the nice, beautiful pictures of Motta um, on the screen. I like this dome. This is going to be fantastic. This is a dome that's got built in LEDs in the dome module itself. So you have a zoom camera and a zoom LEDs. So whichever direction the, the dome points, it zooms in, the LEDs will follow suit. One of the big challenges we have had as an industry is being able to illuminate an area effectively for planetary domes. And this will help resolve that. Thermal cameras, touched on earlier. The big difference is the alarm output. Letting the operator know when there's a uh, change in temperature up or down below a preset threshold. Very important. And again, working on analytics, motion detection, tripwire, etc. And this is my um, favourite little hybrid, <coughs> combining the thermal camera and the true night camera. This is where you can merge the two images together, as I mentioned earlier. Standalone MBRs. Next door, you will see two of the new SNR, SRN, 1670s. Image quality is fantastic. The big step forward for us this year, but in difference with our 32 and 64 channel, is the fact that these have a monitor output. They have mouse control. You don't effectively need a PC to, to run it. Yes, you do have the software, you have the web page, of course. But with the cameras going on the network, and you can set the whole thing up from this DPI. Is MVR. It's really good. Have a look at it. It's a fabulous bit of kit. <coughs> Later on this year, Lucas mentioned it in his presentation, we're bringing out an enterprise MVR with hot swappable drives. It has uh, analytics built into the device. Um, a really good product for our network and solutions business. We then have the system integration MVR as well. Um, here, it's got a built-in POE and L2 switch to be able to power the cameras directly from the device. Another great step forward, making things simpler for the installer. Mobile MVR. To help us compete in the transport business, where we are doing very well in specifying our cameras at the moment, we also need to produce a device that records them. So we're bringing out this device that will also record not just the video, but the vehicle logging data as well. When it breaks, when it accelerates, when it turns left, when it turns right. This is important, not just for um, security, but for to save the, the bus driver being sued. For when he said, well, I was told he braked so hard, I fell over in the bus. Where in fact, this will tell the fact that, no, he actually braked at a normal rate. This will have hot swappable solid state hard drives. One of the biggest challenges we have in putting devices on buses and trains and taxis is the vibration issue. 
So with solid state drive, that makes it a lot simpler to manage. And the other important thing there for the MVR is it works down to minus 20. The key here is, especially with normal drives, you have to wait until the drive gets to up to 5 degrees centigrade before it will work properly, otherwise you'll damage the drive. Many instances where you have trucks, say a cigarette truck or a patch, patch of tanker that have a, a DVR on board, they start up in the middle of winter and the, the DVR just breaks because the hard drive cannot cope with being started at low temperatures. This will overcome that. Standalone DVRs. We're adding to our range at the moment. We're bringing out an enterprise DVR. And the things I just want to highlight here, onboard rate with hot swappable drives. The other thing which is very interesting is the intelligent recording. And what I mean by that is, with this device we're going to have built-in analytics. From that analytics, you then save the metadata. You can then search for that metadata on the device. A great step forward for an enterprise level system. Bringing out some more lower cost devices. Same look and feel as the range, the successful range we brought out this year. You saw the range on the, the benchmark test. Again, we've got 90% of the benchmark test for this range of DVRs. What we're doing here is the same record rate, it's the same quality. We're taking out some of the features that people don't necessarily need to just bring the cost level down enough for some people to, to buy into this market a bit more. The HD recorder. As James mentioned, there's no point bringing out HD cameras or megapixel -like cameras without the ability to record them. And this is what we've got with this device here. SDI and HDMI monitor support, um, and a gigabit Ethernet port to be able to transmit that high quality images back out. CMS software. We talked a lot this morning about our TSM software, and this is the more component part. The standard the SSB Samsung Software Basic 1000. This is the software for that. As I said, 20 live images come through for a single operator. Professional, Samsung Software Professional 1000. Again, this is where you have a sitting operator viewing up to 144 live streams with the optional extras of the analytic modules below. And the Enterprise SSE 1000, with the extra 2 and 3D mapping. You'll see this next door. You'll see the TSM 2000 working next door. And the image quality on the, the, the video wall is fantastic. The control is very, very good. The interactive mapping is something to believe. So please, after the presentation, have a look for yourselves. That's all I'm going to say about the video side of things. I'm just going to move now on to the new products we bring out for access control, VDP, and intruder. We bring out some more controllers, readers, standalone readers, and accessories. Is this available for the cameras or for the new products? Sorry? The data sheet of the new products. We're, we're, we're bringing out more data sheets, yes. Yeah. Yeah. On the controllers, we have some new intelligent. 32 door access control units. As I said, control of the 32 doors, it's Linux based, um, the fault tolerance system. On top of that, we will also be down to now the 8 door version as well, with 16 inputs, 16 outputs, 100,000 users, and a buffer of 100,000 as well. By Q4, um, we'll make this web based. There's one thing Alistair mentioned in his report on the big growth this year in access control controllers is web-based access to those devices. And this is what we're looking to do. The enterprise software. This is an additional software to have now to be able to support the 32-door controllers and the 8-door controllers. It's an addition to what we have now. And the key to all this is the video integration, the SRDs. Having the one manufacturer having the complete package. This is very important. Readers, standalone readers. The fingerprint reader here. This is important for territories such as Italy, where you cannot have the fingerprint data on the reader. This is where the data is held on the card. And this is the reader for that. Coming out Q4. More.
some new readers here, more proximity readers, utilizing the 125 for proximity um, frequencies, EM format for 512 users. IP66 banner resistance. Accessories. Shadow packs. When you have standalone readers and you, you have lots of cards, you access the card to each reader one by one. If you lose that card or someone loses it, you don't know who's got it. You have to have the ability to disable that card. And this is what the shadow pack does. It gives the owners, the operators, the ability to quickly disable that lost or stolen card. It's again to preserve the integrity of your security system. ID badge production, big step up for systems, solutions. For us to get into the solutions, it's not just on the video side, it's got to be on the access control side as well. And this is where you can import the photos to it, add the database, what information do you want on that card. You can add that with this software. Power packages, this is the ability to, to power the controllers with battery backup using a 3 and 5 amp system. Card enrollers. Instead of having to go for to every card, um, every reader, and enroll each card, you have a desktop plug -in device plug it into your PC and quickly enroll those 500 cards, nice and simple. This is the fingerprint enroller for it. Doesn't have to be just the Italian market, but it's particularly for the Italian market where they can't have the, the fingerprint data on the reader. It's got to be on the card. And this is the enrollment reader that allows you to do that data. Video door frame. Bring out a new range of door cam cameras. This is one here, um, pinhole camera, camera resistant, um, single plate. We also bring out two other options. One we can put a nameplate on it, and one up to six nameplates on the bottom. The master panel. This will allow the, the panel to talk to up to 200 flats or households in one system. It's a bus type to make it easier for the wiring. The camera has LED illumination around the camera to enable you to see at night time and to see who's coming to the door. So it's a combined video door phone and access control panel in one go. The handset. A whole new range of handsets coming through this year. We have the black and white options, we have the star, the bus type, and the digital type. The beauty is though, they look the same. You might want to mix and match throughout the, your apartments, but they all look the same, and that is important for our, our field, for our products. Each of these can have three additional handsets. You might have one in the living room, you might have one in the kitchen, you might have one in the hallway, no problem at all. Again, linked to a front and back door of the one system. This is a cost effective video door phone, make it nice and simple, make it more effective for people to be able to purchase things. And this one I think is fabulous. Plug your TV into the back. Um, Send in screen, hands free operation, but able to have the old TV control as well. And not forgetting the audio handset. You might not want three, four, five video handsets around your flat. You want the one video handset, the other ones can be the audio handset as well. Bringing the total package together. The accessories. This is a floor distributor. You now have four of these connected together, and each of those can talk up to a total of 208 intercom units. So the bus type device I showed at the beginning to allow you to talk to the 200 site flats. This is the device that allows you to do that. Concierge. How many times do you get to uh, the block of flats? You can't remember which flat is your friends in. You want to speak to the concierge. They'll inform you, put you through, and allow you into the building. And this is the device that will allow them to do that. The final area we're going to talk about is our intrusion arm. New sensors being out this year. The difference here we have a sensor that does uh, microwave as well as um, PIR sensing. It is a 12 by 9, and one of the great things is the vertical drop. There's very little blind spot between where the device is fitted and where the first beam appears. 
Same idea, but this one is to go on the ceiling with a three, full 360 degree detection range. Talks about auto temperature detection. With this, if the temperature changes too much, it has to recompensate for that to enable you to understand the differences in the contrast between the ambient temperature and the temperature of somebody walking around the site. A new range of um, aesthetically looking intruder devices. We have the quad PIR, indoors and outdoors, long range up to 20 meters, the curtain range, the bead range, a whole array of intruder products coming through as well. So what we've shown you here is the fact that we are embracing the new technology. We're embracing the network products. We're embracing them in such a way that we create the solutions to, for our business. And they're not just video, they're also access control and they're also intruder. Thank you very much. Um,